Hey guys, today we are dynoing this 460. So I've been building this for my 74 Ford F100 and I'm gonna try and run through the parts right now um, that I had to use. I have a list of all the part numbers in the description of the video. And then I'll show you some dyno footage and talk about what we found. Um, this is after the dyno and it's all in one piece, which is a good thing. So I had the block and the crank and piston and, and rods, a couple other things, um, heads as well. I put new springs in the heads and I ported them myself. So not a great port job, but better than stock. Uh, obviously it's got an intake on it, stock distributor, stock water pump, um, high volume oil pump, just cause that's what AutoZone sold. It's got headers on it. It's got a, um, Summit Racing camshaft in it, Summit Racing oil pan, and a Cloy's timing set, which is installed four degrees advance. Um, I just ran the DuraSpark system on it. That seemed to work great. I got that um, wiring harness from um, Painless Performance and it was perfect. Super easy to install. So yeah, uh, like I said, I'll have that list of parts in the description, but I'm gonna go through a couple things here that um, I noticed when I was putting everything together. So that timing set can be installed four degrees advanced or straight up or four degrees retarded. Um, I did some research and decided to go with advanced, but um, you can do your own research and go from there. Um, the gasket kit, I just got the Felpro kit that has literally all the gaskets. It's perfect, everything fit great. It was amazing. Um, I used a 600 CFM carb because I was given it and I was trying to be cheap and it worked and it's gonna be a blast to drive on the street but definitely the next upgrade is gonna be a dual pl or a single plane intake and probably 750 or 850 carb on top, unless I save up the money and put a sniper EFI system on it. Um, Summit camshaft, the cheap one worked great, made tons of torque, and um, it's gonna be a great truck engine. That is for sure. Um, all the stock parts I ended up getting off uh, at AutoZone. They come with lifetime warranty, so why the heck not? Um, this distributor here, they come in two pieces. It's a cap plus like a spacer here. Now I tapped the hole in the aluminum of the distributor and drilled a hole through the plastic here that keeps it from twisting. So see the top cap twists a little bit, but when this middle piece twists, it twists you know almost a couple degrees and that can really screw up your timing. So I put that screw in there and that made it real steady and worked out great. If I leave any parts or part numbers out um, and you have questions about them, feel free to comment and I will try to respond to your comments. Uh, I'm gonna show you some dyno footage that'll show you the numbers, the horsepower and torque that we got. And um, I'll talk about some stuff we had to work on, but overall, I'm really happy with this engine.
point for air, okay, that's air fuel. Yeah. And that's both sides. Yep. And we're shooting for somewhere between like 12 and 13. Well, yes, on this, you want, with the cruising, this is a little lean. With the cruising, you probably want it uh, mid 13. Mid 13? Okay. Yeah, because let me give you a digital view of that. So, why did it go lean all of a sudden? Because it changed the load on it? As the engine cycles through its uh, deal, it'll, it'll change. Because it's transitioning, the circuits are changing. Okay. So, this started at about 70, and as it was more, we got to go yeah, down yeah, a little bit. Rock. What are we expecting it to stay at? I don't know. That is plenty of oil pressure at 2,000 RPM. Okay. If you had hot oil pressure at 35 or 40 at this RPM, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Just to give you an idea, my coming side was at 11 pounds, 750. As soon as the RPM comes up, as soon as the oil pressure comes up, we're good. What we're doing here is we're cycling through up and down between 3,000 and 2,000 RPM. What we're trying to do is get a load on it and a vacuum. The load is to seat the ring. You see when it gets down here to 2,000 RPM, we get 80 pounds of torque on the ring. When we get up here to 3,000, it should have almost no load on it, and we want the vacuum to help the ring to rotate. Okay. And this is all going on while the camshaft is breaking. Actually, it doesn't take that long to break in ring. You hit them with a couple. You hit them with a couple shots of uh, of torque, and they'll they'll seat pretty quick. But the cam takes a little bit. How many cycles will we run then? Uh, we're running 30 cycles, so. Uh,
Now in ignition timing, what you're looking for is how the spark plug anneals, and when it gets right to this corner here, your timing is perfect. And if you go too far, it, you'll see the annealing take place down to the, where, where it passes it. So, but the thing is, is we keep advancing the timing. We will probably go too far and it'll end up down here. It doesn't hurt anything, but you just can't use the plugs again. Mm. But we are right there.